uh, forum that will address the topic of how smart specialization strategies as best practices supported by the Adrian program are boosting innovation and facilitate uh, the EU integration process to the Western Balkans. My name is Lucia Sil. I am a member of the European Commission's cluster expert group and it will be my pleasure to accompany you for the next two hours and ensure a smooth running of the event together with the technical team in the back behind the scenes. Before we literally dive into the event, I would just like to very briefly go with you through the agenda, introduce you the speakers, and also give you a few uh, hints of the housekeeping rules. Uh, these are very quickly. Uh, first of all, we recommend that you switch off all the other open applications in order to better experience our event. And uh, as a participant, you have the possibility to ask questions and place comments in the chat throughout the event. This will be addressed uh, in a special session dedicated to an open dialogue with the speakers and the audience on a first-come, first-served basis. And a last remark uh, that the event is going to be recorded. So let's set the scene. And uh, the question is, why discuss about smart specialization strategies? Well, non EU member countries must comply with a full package of measures to align with EU standards and regulations, which include 35 different policy fields. Among them, science and research, as well as regional policy and coordination of structural instruments, are the most relevant ones to allow for the development of the so called smart specialization strategies. These are an expression of uh, sound innovation policies and inherently they can be drivers for the improvement of the country's innovation ecosystems. Bringing together the EU and non-EU member states through collaboration among regions is crucial for the implementation of the smart specialization strategies. Through sharing of knowledge, coordinating and exploiting synergies, uh, cooperation in the area of smart specialization strategies may increase the chances to gain access to wider business but also knowledge networks, increase uh, the, uh, or get additional research capacity and expand business opportunities. This afternoon, we would like to better understand if and how transnational collaboration plays a significant role in the support of innovation and implementation of smart specialization strategies, especially towards the pre-accession countries of the Adriatic Ionian region. In this frame, the Adrian program can ease transfer and improve synergies between the EU and non-EU countries. So let's go quickly through the agenda of the event. We invited today seven speakers from the Adrian countries with great knowledge in order to make a benefit from a broad coverage of the topic of smart specialization strategies. They are, in order of their presentations, Dimitri Korpakis, former EU official and co-founder of the initiative Friends of Smart Specialization, Alish Knamosh, Senior Policy Analyst at the Joint Research Center of the European Commission. Florence Sahaji, Director for Development Program and Program Manager for Regional Economic Area at the Prime Minister's Office in Albania. Viktor Medovic, Director of Serbia Accelerated Innovation and Growth Entrepreneurship Project at the Ministry of Education, Science and Technological Development and also Coordinator of the Smart Specialization Strategy Development in Serbia. Katerina Brancaloni, Head of European Policy Coordination, Planning, Cooperation and Evaluation Unit at the Director uh, General for Resources, Europe, Innovation and Institutions at Emilia-Romagna Region in Italy. Lodovico Gerardi, Coordinator of the Managing Authority Unit at the Emilia-Romagna Region in Italy. And last but not least, Toma Gorsaric from the Croatian Chamber of Economy, Sector for Industrial Development and Innovation System. After the presentations, the event will continue with an open dialogue with the speakers and audience for questions and answers. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of challenges nowadays everywhere and this event is no exception to this uh, situation. We have seven speakers, but only two hours at our disposal for the presentations and also for the questions and answers. 
The challenge lies in the limited time for each speaker to address a complex issue and respecting the time of uh, one's own is respecting the co-speakers and giving everyone a fair opportunity to bring an important message and engage in a dialogue with the participants. Having said this, as a short overview of the event and introduction elements, it is time for the first panelist to take the floor. And I would like to invite you, Mr. Dimitri Kolpakis, former EU official and co-founder of the initiative Friends of Smart Specialization. Please come on the virtual stage and take over the screen sharing for your presentation. And while we are switching uh, uh, the screens, I would like to start by asking you a question. Uh, smart specialization strategies are some of the most innovative elements of the reformed EU cohesion policy. They focus on the relevance of the place-based approach and are characterized uh, by the identification of strategic areas for intervention through analysis of the economic potential of specific territories. They frame the overall goals of the programming period for 2014-2020, smart, sustainable and inclusive growth. And therefore, the question goes, what are their main outcomes and which are the lessons learned in view of the post-2020 programming period? The floor is all yours for the next 10 minutes. Thank you in advance. Thank you very much, uh, Lucia, for this uh, wonderful introduction. Actually, this is a very, very difficult question, and I will try to respond as, as better as I can in the in the next uh, 10 minutes or so that i have been allocated so i will be quite short uh, first of all i would like also to thank the organizers of this meeting that invited me and uh, by by this way the the initiative of friends of mass specialization which is an initiative of three retired people uh, based in brussels and um, i would like to, uh, to 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 have a disclaimer that uh, although I was a, uh, I'm a former commission official, um, I don't convey here uh, official information that is rather going to be conveyed by my colleague Alex Gnamos that will follow me uh, after after this presentation. So let me let me share my screen for this uh, short uh, presentation to that will try uh, to to respond uh, actually to to this uh, to this question. Uh, what we have learned uh, in these uh, 12 years uh, of smart specialization. And as I have entitled my presentation, it was rather navigating an uncharted path. It was a very, very fresh uh, and original idea. Uh, and uh, nobody actually knew where this could really lead uh, the, the member states and regions in, in this journey. So uh, what uh, what actually? Um, let me see if I can make it work. But, so um, I'm pretty sure everybody uh, watching this uh, presentation is actually very much aware of the concept of mass specialization, but it doesn't harm. To, uh, to, to, to remind everybody that it is a process that is actually uh, helps uh, the, the, the places around Europe and actually uh, elsewhere in the world now to develop a vision to identify the priority areas of intervention where the real strategic growth drivers for the future lie. And this is something that every territory can, can do. Uh, this also applies to the uh, to the territories we are actually covering at this phase, namely the Western Balkans. So it's a place development strategy that relies heavily, not so much on the old planning process that is top down. So it's not, uh, I would say, the hard specialization uh, thing that we knew from the past. That it is actually very very dangerous to follow, but this is a, a, a planning process which is. Uh, based on the so-called entrepreneurial discovery process, uh, focused on the detection of the the real opportunities of the future, uh, and uh, the support that the public authorities can really convey through an appropriate system of governance uh, to the real entrepreneur, 
which can be, of course, the, the entrepreneurs as we know them, but it can be also, in other cases, the knowledge institutions, universities, research centers, and, and so forth. So it is a multi-stakeholder arrangement that tries to make the most uh, of, of the future opportunities. And um, now we are, as I said, uh, uh, 12 years on. Uh, it was born, because it was born in 2009, actually in my own DG, the D Directorate General for Research and Innovation, in the context of a high-level expert group, with Dominique Forer, Paul David, and, and Brown and Hall, working for the research commissioner, Yannis Potosnik at the time, the so-called Knowledge for Growth Group. To date, we, we are uh, happy to see that more than 180 uh, smart specialization strategies have been developed and are in the process of being implemented all around Europe. But it, wh while this is actually ongoing, uh, and I can remind you that the, uh, the last one started almost in 2016 because the regulations of the cohesion policy allowed this to happen, we have very few Europe-wide evaluation efforts so far, and the preliminary reviews we have are quite mixed on the outcomes. Um, actually, if you go through some academic uh, papers, you can see that people find that, uh, although, that uh, uh, although it was quite well supported by, by my colleagues in JRC with the Smart Specialization Platform, and there is enormous um, expert effort deployed, a lot of regions have still ignored some key concepts of relatedness and connectivity, and they made their priorities, uh, I would say rather, by following some mimicking uh, uh, initiatives. And so, uh, in some in places, weak institutional governance contributed to these problems. So, at the end of the day, uh, it went like a proliferation of the same priority areas, what you could call coffee for all, uh, which is a, a, an expression that uh, an old colleague, Mike Michela Dabasso, was using at the time, actually to, to, to say to people to avoid this. What are the problems with, uh, with smart specialization exercises? Actually, it's a very complex in, initiative, and uh, we can actually forgive some of the regions that have been uh, facing problems with that. Because as you go through the different stages from the, uh, as you build up the initiative, you can find a lot of data, a lot of problems with, uh, with, uh, uh, with, with mounting the initiative. And you can see the same problems actually coming back and forth. They have to do with the skills of people, with the skills and the administrations involved, uh, we have, we, it, they are also linked with lack of appropriate data, because in order to come up with a, a proper prioritization uh, and detection process, you have to build uh, not only on your intuition, but also on appropriate data. Sometimes it's also a problem of getting people on board. Uh, so it's a, it's a kind of um, participatory leadership exercise problem. You cannot easily bring any, everybody on board of this uh, entrepreneurial discovery process. And uh, there have been also difficulties on, on getting civil society groups involved uh, so that you can have the full quadruple helix uh, deployed. Uh, but these were known problems and we have to make sure that we, make, we, we do better in the future. If on the other side, we can see what uh, actually what actually really works. Uh, there are some simple rules that people can follow uh, in the future to make things better. So you have to avoid proliferation of priorities, focus on really detecting, identifying, and actively supporting the new growth drivers. So once you, you know wh uh, what are the real uh, emerging priorities, you can go and support these people uh, with real support programs, support multidimensional innovation, L listen really to all stakeholders in the region, including the civil society, and uh, go for re what we call related diversification. So do not put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, much as we do, uh, is if, if you are investing, for example, in the stock market, you are not going to put all your options in one 
particular area, but diversify and uh, try to, uh, to mix, I would say, more conventional with more radical uh, projects so that you have a better chance uh, for the future. As we go out of the COVID crisis slowly, because we are still in, uh, many people believe that we are out, but personally, I believe we still have a role to go, but we are building uh, the, the, the future resilience and recovery uh, paths. Smart specialization can be central towards the new transformative activities that we actually need at regional level. How we can build a real transformative action? We have to focus on what can really translate evolutionary or disruptive changes in traditional economic sectors and uh, support a new generation of industries and services to transform profoundly the regional economy. And uh, this can only happen if we support the development of human capital, uh, give R&D incentives, diffuse more innovation, um, managing better uh, what we're actually doing, especially management of innovation initiatives. And uh, last but not least, an important uh, aspect, build effectively and efficient monitoring and evaluation feedback loops. The interregional uh, challenge for smart specialization is also a huge opportunity, especially in the context of a macro regional strategy like the one we are, we are here today, uh, because interlinking regional smart specialization can be also challenging, but there are determinants such as social capital, uh, the relatedness of the different economic initiatives that can provide a, a, a way forward, especially uh, if we get a perspective of functional regions. And uh, if you look to the future, we have a new instrument coming forward, the I3, the Interregional Innovation Investment, that can be critical for developing smart specialization in joint uh, value chains. So I will finish by uh, giving some ideas and recommendations for the policymakers that are with us today. We have to upgrade and improve policy capacity and institutional thickness in the regions involved, introduce a difficult uh, twin track experimental strategy, uh, what people call experimental governance. So we need uh, to push forward the stable conventional access, but at the same time, time don't uh, give up with experimental approaches. Uh, listen more to private entrepreneur, take all the new uh, opportunities of the data science and analytics for strengthening decision making. We had a recent JRC report on that, that uh, I invite everybody to, 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 to study and act vigorously towards the actions that are supported by the Green Deal and uh, try to achieve what we actually now call smart specialization for sustainability, which must guide uh, all our new efforts for the future. So I hope I was more or less within my time and I will stop sharing my screen here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Kopakis, for this overview on the essence of smart specialization strategies. And now we would like to learn more about how smart specialization strategies are being developed in the Western Balkan countries. And for this, I would like to invite Mr. Alish Knamush, a senior policy analyst at the Joint Research Center of the European Commission, to take the floor. We are very happy to have you with us. and. Uh, listen from your experience. I know your presentation is going to be uh, presented by the technical team. And I would like to start with a short question to you. Um, Mr. Gnanosh, the Joint Research Center of the European Commission is at the forefront of the provision of guidance and assistance to the Western Balkan countries for the development of smart specialization strategies. Uh, can you tell us more about what your institution has done so far and what is the current state of play? And with this, the floor is all yours for the next 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, can I have my presentation, please? Uh, we agreed uh, with, the with the organizers to actually run it from there because... Uh, exactly.
Um, in the meantime, let me start by, by thanking to the organizers uh, to invite me to this uh, interesting and important event devoted to the Adrian, uh, Adrian program efforts to actually support also the integration of the Western Balkan. Um, I have been asked actually to provide quite extensive information regarding the smart specialization in Western Balkan and also how it may help the Western Balkan to better integrate into the mainstream EU innovation activities. So I will actually reply to your question within my presentation. I still don't see it. I don't know. I is it also uh, don't see it and I wish I had it open on my screen, but it looks like I'm also not able to share my screen. So we are waiting for the technical team to open the presentation. Yesterday it worked mm -hmm. okay. Because I was... Everything at first, that's always the challenge and uh, expecting the unexpected. Um, okay, here it is. Looks, there it is. There you have it. Um, Thank you. No, that, is, uh, that is yesterday one. <laughs> it's not the right one. It's not the right one. Um, my suggestion would be, shall we maybe until we, uh, when uh, while we solve uh, the issue with the presentations that we maybe move to the next speakers and in the meantime, I kindly ask the technical team to make sure that they have the right presentation. Okay. In that, if you don't mind, so I would suggest then that we go to the next speaker, which is Mrs. Florenza Haji, Director for Development Programs and Program Manager for Regional Economic Area at the Prime Minister's Office in Albania. Welcome and thank you for being with us today. So if you could uh, take over the screen for your presentation while I start with a short question to you. Mrs. Aji, the European Commission is going to publish the innovation agenda for the Western Balkans, high highlighting four main elements, the application of the smart specialization methodology to design and implement innovation strategies, uh, capacity building activities for technology transfer, support to transnational collaboration and linkages in the context of the EU macro-regional strategies and uh, data quality enhancement. So the question is, uh, what is Albania doing in view of the ECO3 programs post-2020 in this respect to enhance innovation? The floor is yours for the next 10 minutes and in the back, thank you for taking care of Mr. Knamur's presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lucia, and thank you for the invitation, for being able to give some insights on what Albania is doing and what initiatives we are taking regarding innovation and regarding smart socialization. I'm trying to share the screen. Okay. Right, it okay. looks, we can see it. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, I would like to start uh, just a few words regarding what my unit does and what is the role of the unit. Uh, this is the unit for development programs, which is um, in the Prime Minister's office. It has mainly a coordination role, especially for those initiatives that uh, deal with many actors, many line ministries and many agencies and, uh, and also the private sector and uh, civil society, universities. So what we do is to coordinate such big initiatives. And smart socialization is one of these initiatives. And also the agenda on uh, innovation that we are very happy that it will be signed very soon uh, is one of these initiatives. It has a lot of factors and needs a lot of coordination from the central point of view. Uh, what we have done so far regarding the smart socialization is that uh, we have already set a group, a working group, and we have been uh, working for many years now with the help, of course, of uh, GRC. And we really appreciate uh, their help and uh, we, we wish to have the help uh, until we uh, finalize our uh, smart socialization strategy and after that for the implementation. Uh, as uh, uh, the first speaker said, it has not been a very easy task to do because uh, drafting a smart digitalization uh, strategy is a, a complex uh, process. Uh, it was a new process for us, so it took some time in order to grasp the meaning of what the smart digitalization is and why it is important for our country and for our economic development and why it is important to have 
uh, identified the sectors of the economy that will really uh, have a saying and have a contribution to our economic development of the next years. So what we have done so far and uh, what are the objectives of the smart specialization in, uh, in our country is first of all to, to first to have a strategy like that and approve it. Uh, and then uh, the identification of these strategic areas uh, for intervention. That, and based on those areas, we have to do the uh, analysis of strengths of, uh, that our country has in terms of, uh, uh, of capital, in terms of human uh, skills, uh, so, and, and also in terms of uh, where we are regarding the private sector uh, initiatives uh, in these sectors then uh, it should be in line with our country priorities because uh, we have a set of country priorities. Of course, they might change and they have changed somehow after the COVID crisis. Uh, and uh, also the, the support of effective and efficient measures that uh, will provide incentives to research and innovation investments in the future. So we hope to have that strategy ready for approval by 2022. Let's hope by the first half, but if I'm optimistic. Um, the calendar of work, I'm not going to stop here uh, for a long time because uh, it might be a little bit boring. What I wanted to say is that we started like, the real uh, work in 2018, uh, even though uh, the, the work to, to write the strategy might, may, may have started a little bit earlier, but uh, in 2018, the, most of work was done. We had the team ready to start. And then 2019-2020, we also did a study on clusters and then we worked on the mapping of economic, innovative and scientific potential of our country, which has been uh, almost finalized. Uh, and uh, we hope to, uh, to have that mapping uh, approved and then published uh, in this uh, upcoming months. In 2021, uh, we also worked on a methodology for the next phase, which is the qualitative phase. Uh, and we have drafted that methodology. We are waiting for approval of that methodology from the GRC, but uh, we hope that we're in the good uh, road and to continue uh, with that pace and uh, hopefully a little bit faster so that we can conclude with, uh, with the strategy. Uh, what I wanted also to mention here is that uh, due to the fact that we are still drafting the strategy, we had the opportunity to also make some changes and also reflect what uh, COVID crisis uh, did to our economies and how it changed or transformed some of our economies and the private sector, of course. Um, so the next steps are, uh, of course, uh, publish the mapping report, which is the quantitative phase, and then move on with the qualitative and EDP phase that will be with a big involvement of the private sector. And then, uh, of course, the, the adoption of the S3 strategy by 2022. Uh, here we have uh, to take, in, we are taking into consideration the emerging priority sectors because as we are driving, as we are drafting the strategy, uh, and as I said before, some uh, sectors became a priority also due to the coronavirus crisis. So sectors like innovation, that uh, that sector was somehow of, of focus until uh, some two years ago, but not so much. So after the COVID crisis. This came uh, into the, our attention and then Blue Growth, uh, we are working uh, on, a, on a program for the moment, a national program on Blue Economy. And we believe that that is a sector that might have a lot of uh, contribution in our economic development. So this is another sector that we want to see inside the, the uh, smart specialization strategy and also industrial development, etc. So there are like two or three priority sectors that should be there and it is a good point that we are drafting it, we haven't finalized it so that we can reflect them. Uh, regarding uh, some uh, initiatives or like project ideas or, or what we did uh, uh, during the programming of IPA 3, let's say in the frame of that uh, of uh, programming IPA 3, are the following. First of all, we uh, try to really uh, put in line our priorities also with other processes like the Common Regional Market Action Plan the agenda for innovation and also our national priorities. And uh, we uh, had, we proposed some of the projects such as an establishment uh, of a center of excellence on research and biomarine sciences uh, with focus on the Toronto channel involving all the Adriatic Union countries. 
this was actually a very good project proposal and uh, we uh, had also talked with our partners uh, also in uh, Italy and Puglia region in order to make that uh, happen but for the moment from what we have uh, uh, been informed this would not be uh, has not been like positively screening screened by the commission but we might apply through different channels but this is a good project that we want to move forward uh, then another project is the modernization of national center for natural disaster and earthquakes also in the framework of creating a regional network of the centers and this was also uh, it started also uh, because of the fact of the uh, earthquake that we experienced uh, so we said that it's good to have something like this but at a regional level uh, we're trying also to move forward with that uh, digitalization of the education sector and introduction of blockchain technology on the higher education was another uh, project that we uh, we proposed in term in the context of IPA 3 uh, EU for Innovation, it, it was a project that uh, was very successful actually in our country and we, are, we probably will have a phase two of that project. It, it mainly focuses on startups, but uh, in this second phase, we have tried to link that project with smart specialization, so meaning the sectors that will come as a priority out of the smart specialization strategy. So these sectors, we should focus on innovating them and also on innovation of uh, existing SMEs. So not only startups, new startups. Uh, and in order to uh, somehow uh, conclude, I would like to say that uh, having a perspective, a transnational perspective uh, and the regional perspective in the, in the S3 of the smart civilization process is very important. Uh, and especially now after the COVID crisis, we should consider the region and also the macro uh, Adriatic, Adriatic Union region as, a, as one region. And uh, when it comes to economic development, so we should find out what is our competitive advantage uh, in each of our countries and see how we can make it work and how we can work all together in order to have the region, to see the region as a whole and to identify regional priority sectors along, of course, with the national ones. Uh, each country, therefore, is good if it is, it is specialized in an area where there are uh, more human and financial for capital advantages and potential for the country, uh, but always seen from the uh, transnational perspective, from the regional perspective. So, because in this way, we all might have uh, bigger benefits and increase the comparative advantage of the region as a whole. So, uh, this is what I wanted to say. I hope I have not been very long. And uh, thank you again. Thank you very much. And I think it's, uh, it's wonderful to hear uh, this transnational perspective and to call you seeing the region as a whole. It's a very nice model for our event and uh, the topic we're addressing today. Thank you very much for the Albanian perspective. And I think now the technical problems should be solved and we can go back to Mr. Alis Knamush. If we can turn back the spotlight on, on you and on your presentation. Yep. Right. So, thank you very much for letting us know more about what the GIC has done uh, so far in supporting uh, the development of smart specialization strategies in the Western Balkans and what is the current state of play. The floor is yours. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned, I have been asked to actually provide quite extensive information regarding the smart specialization, in, especially in the Western Balkan and also how it may help the Western Balkan to better integrate into the mainstream EU innovation activities. So the title you see, it's basically the title of the session here, Boosting Innovation Facility Integration Process of the Western Balkans, and in the special case of the Smart Specialization Strategies. Can I have the next slide, please? Yeah. Um, look, in 2018, the European Commission actually uh, adopted the, uh, the so-called enlargement perspective for enhanced EU engagement with the Western Balkans. Uh, it is composed of six new flex flagship initiatives to support the transformation of the Western Balkans. And within the second one, uh, the on uh, initiative to enhance support for socioeconomic developments, 
uh, uh, this actually introduced uh, strengthened economic reform program exercise, which clearly recognized the critical importance of the smart specialization approach for the Western Balkans. Uh, next slide, please. Um, some of my some of our colleagues and friends from the Western Balkan might actually recognize some of the slides because we we have been using them in the in some meetings and trainings. Uh, so uh, JRC actually developed on the ba on the basis of the experiences with the European Union smart specialization strategies. We developed a, a bit more hands-on uh, approach on the smart specialization development in order to help. The Western Balkans, but also to the other countries that are embarking on the smart specialization strategy path to better channel their activities and better prepare for it. Uh, because as you have heard actually from the from our Albanian colleague, it's quite a complex process. It might sound very easy, but at the end it's quite a process that requires a lot of preconditions in a way in order to be successful with the smart position strategy and in this uh, actually it proved uh, especially in the western balkan case but also previously in the eastern european countries and regions that institutional capacity uh, capacity building is crucial uh, then of course it follows up through mapping exercise to entrepreneur discovery process also a very important one and then later also institutional capacity for implementation and designing of the strategy could i have the next slide please yeah um, okay you asked me about a status uh, the status is is roughly like that uh, there is montenegro that had uh, adopted it and and, and had approved their implement their their smart position strategy already in in late 2019, early 2020. So they are in the pathway of implementing their smart specialization strategy. Uh, Serbia had, uh, had basically finished the process in 2020, uh, but it still needs to discuss with the European Commission the, um, uh, the, the implementation process and so on. And then the other uh, three uh, economies in, in, in the South, uh, they, are in, they have initiated the smart specialization process you have heard from Albanian uh, side uh, where they stand and then there's also there's the Bosnia Herzegovina uh, which practically is in the pathway of initiating uh, the process because it has some complexities uh, uh, that, that require be solved before so JRC actually in support uh, had done a lot of uh, of uh, things and still supporting the Western Balkan in its pathway to smart specialization. Uh, we have adjusted, as I mentioned, the S3 process methodology to better fit the, the area. Uh, we, are, we also are, are basically contracting specific uh, targeted expert studies like on the global value chains uh, specificity for Western Balkan. We also have customized external expert support in different steps of the process uh, for the countries and we actually develop also a specific uh, ESTRI community of practice in the enlargement region uh, which is a strain of mutual learning activities supporting the, uh, the pathway of the process and what we do we also analyzed uh, are analyzing the Western Balkans smart position potential also in the frame of macro regional cooperation uh, you will actually um, see this uh, in one of the next slides the next slide please uh, i won't take much time here but it's it's just to show that we have also prepared specific s3 fishes which are reporting a little bit on the on the stages and 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 paths of each of the of the economies and also we have a specific website that is that has dedicated pages for each of the country actually at the moment we are uh, we are refurbishing it, uh, revamping it, so it's not available, but this is just a matter of, of a week or something. Could I have the next slide, please? This is actually a part of the central part of what I want to uh, present you today, because uh, we have done um, a, a study specifically for the, for the uh, EU SAR, so for the Adriatic Ionian macro region, uh, a, a st comparative study comparing basically relative research and innovation specialization by participation in the Horizon 2020 projects in clustered domains, uh, uh, clustered uh, smart specialization domains. So uh, you will see later why in the cluster of smart specialization domains. And here you see that, uh, okay, in, in the orange color, you see associated countries to the to the EU program, so the, the, the Western Balkan economies, then the EU member states from the uh, Adriatic Ionian region, and then uh, overall 
uh, EUSAR region with this kind of more brownish uh, color. Um, you will see later, we, I'll come back to these uh, areas which are, which are squared here. So I would perhaps ask you to, to go to the next slide, please. Yes. So uh, this, on the other on the other hand, we we also um, did alignment of smart spatial uh, priorities in the Adriatic Ionian region. It is clustered around uh, nine uh, nine domains or priorities, and uh, actually we also used uh, keywords to to actually grasp it from the uh, from the strategies and from the uh, from the prioritization that was available to us. Uh, next slide, please. Um, here is the smart position or research and innovation in the, in the case where, where of course, smart position has not been developed as yet of the EUSR territories as encoded in the IATRIS3 tool. Um, most of you probably know this IATRIS3 tool. This is uh, available in our website and it actually allows searches by, by various components, but one of them is also territorial level. So we actually put the whole uh, Adriatic Ionian macro region in the in the search. Uh, there is actually I have to point out that uh, North Macedonia is missing. The information on North Macedonia is missing simply because we do not have uh, neither research and innovation information from some kind of national research or innovation strategies. Neither they came to a smart position priorities so that we could encode it. So unfortunately, uh, this country is missing uh, here in, in the study. But for the rest, you can see here we basically in Italy we covered only uh, we we uh, selected only the the regions that are part of the Adriatic Ionian region. And then for Greece also, it is at regional level. For the rest, it's at national level. So of course, Slovenia, Croatia, and then for for Serbia and on Montenegro, uh, they, these are already their smart position priorities. Whereas for Albania and Bosnia, they are only research and innovation activities from from their previous national innovation strategies. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so here, this is the, the table which actually shows uh, from total of 184 smart specialization uh, or research and innovation uh, priorities clustered in these uh, nine S3 domains. You see here how many uh, they were actually related to the, uh, to the uh, priorities and territories and coverage of the, of the Adriatic Ionian priority actions. Um, I have to point out here, of course, uh, you have four pillars, but then within pillars, you have priority action. So that's why it comes to 10. So somebody might say, okay, well, but we only have four, four pillars, but yes, here, here are actually priority actions, which are actually in total 10 um, uh, distributed in four pillars. Uh, so why is it uh, important? I will show in the next slide, please. Um, uh, where you can actually see uh, more specifically how uh, specific uh, priorities uh, in the in the smart position in the research and innovation strategies coincide with the priority uh, actions in the in, in each of the pillars here um, uh, uh, I have to point out that uh, that the total actually mismatches the line summaries partly because in some cases certain smart position priorities address more than uh, one uh, uh, Adrian region priority actions, and in other cases, different smart position priorities might address one particular uh, priority action. So that's why there is mismatch. Yeah. So we didn't. Uh, it's not that we made a, a mess uh, with the calculation. Could I have the next slide, please? Next slide. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so in this slide, you actually see the correlation of smart specialization domains. Uh, of, of this, all these territories with the Adriatic Ionian priority areas. And you can see that there are some where, uh, where uh, taking into consideration the overall uh, strengths of, of research and innovation community in each of these territories, uh, uh, they have more potential for, for, uh, for wide Adriatic Ionian research and innovation uh, collaboration with the broader EU impact. And then on the right, you can see number of related smart position priorities in the USR territories. So you can see here that uh, there are in particular uh, five, uh, five areas uh, where, where, where the Adriatic Ionian, as a total, Adriatic Ionian territory is strong. 
and on top of it there are some which have this asterisk asterisk on the right uh, where uh, where actually the western balkan countries are are stronger than uh, relatively to the whole uh, adriatic ionian region so you see here electronic technologies and ict and also health and well-being which which brings the you know the the strengths uh, and potential of the, of these countries to actually excel in the in the broader uh, environment but why is it in particular uh, important could i have the next slide please um, here just a few uh, a few slides on on how uh, the competitiveness is forged in the in the eu uh, space so um, uh, you would you would be aware that there are that there are thematic smart position platforms and partnerships where basically uh, multiple european regions and territories are participating so there are three thematic smart position platforms one is on the energy the second one is on agri food and the and the third one is on industrial modernization and here you can actually see in the slide that there are multiple territories and administrative units 57 in energy that are taking active uh, uh, active part in the six partnerships that you can see here listed and similarly, there are 59 territorial units uh, uh, that are participating in five uh, partnerships in agri-food. Could I have the next slide, please? Um, yes. So there is actually in the in the uh, industrial modernization there are actually 24 partnerships with 142 territorial administrative units from 30 countries. Um, so could could I have the next slide, please? Uh, uh, why is it important? The importance shows that uh, the, the possibilities for, for strategic partnerships that are forged around these thematic smart specialization partnerships. And you can see here uh, the, uh, in the left columns, in the two left columns, you see the, 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 the country. And in the right, you see the number of participations of territorial uni units and regions from the countries. And you can see here clearly uh, I have just uh, circled the USAR countries, so the Adriatic Ionian countries. And you can see here on the left, there's Italy, there's Slovenia, Greece, which have quite, uh, quite abundant uh, participation, active participation in those, in those partnerships. Uh, and on the right, you can see some countries like Croatia, but also then Montenegro, Bosnia, Herzegovina and Serbia that have very limited uh, involvement in those. So basically the precondition for more active participation in those partnerships is actually a very vigorous smart possession process and it also requires a little bit of time of course because these some of these partnerships have started like four or five years ago when for example montenegro and serbia and of course bosnia herzegovina they didn't have their um, their smart possession they even even started their smart possession process in case of bosnia herzegovina it's interesting uh, they are partner in one of the very very specific um, a partnership on sustainable construction and I think that their uh, their federal ministry on reconstruction is actually part of it uh, it's more like as an observer uh, normally the precondition would be to have a smart position strategy but in this particular particular case the partners decided to actually you know help Bosnia Herzegovina with some ideas and so on and to include it already so I think this is more or less could I have the next slide I think this is this is it from my part I will be very happy to actually answer um, your questions. That was impossible to, to actually address more issues in a, in a very short presentation. Many thanks. We thank you very, very much, Mr. Gnamush, for, for your presentation. Uh, I think we're all aware of the challenge uh, that, uh, that you encountered to bring such a complex theme. Not only the smart specialization is complex, but also bringing all these aspects uh, into this uh, short presentation. Thank you very much. Um, we go now to the uh, next speaker uh, in line, and uh, he's Professor Viktor Nedovic, uh, Director of Serbia Accelerating Innovation and Growth Entrepreneurship Project at the Ministry of Education, Science and Technological Development in Serbia. Um, you're also coordinator of the Smart Specialization uh, Strategy Development and co-coordinator of the EU Strategy for Danube Region Priority Area 7. So I would like to invite you to take the virtual floor and start uh, sharing your screen for your presentation while I set the scene for you with a, a small question. Uh, Mr. Nedovic, you were appointed uh, by the Serbian government as assistant minister in charge of international science and technology cooperation and EU integration in the ministry responsible for science. 
and you have been active in the creation of policies and programs related to international cooperation uh, and integration in the European research area. So the question is, how is Serbia preparing itself in view of the next programming period in the field of innovation? And what is the current experience with the smart specialization strategies? The floor is yours for the next 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, uh, Lucia. I, I would like first to uh, thanks to the organizers that they invited me to, to be the part of this uh, very comprehensive, very interesting uh, panel uh, discussion today. Uh, yes, Serbia decided uh, uh, to take a part in the next uh, programming period uh, to start with the ne negotiation with the uh, Commission uh, related to the uh, Participation Horizon Europe program and all other community programs related to uh, science, innovation, uh, education, if you want. And uh, we are in the uh, rather major uh, stage of the uh, discussion and development uh, uh, related to the participation of our communities uh, in, uh, in, the, in different programs, in particular in Horizon Europe. Um, this delay, as our program already started, uh, is related uh, to uh, some of the administrative uh, burdens and delays, uh, uh, mostly related to, uh, to the process uh, that is uh, ongoing in the Commission. And uh, what is important to say that uh, on the level of the Ministry, on the level of the government, uh, we decided to, to be a part of this program. On that way, uh, as uh, you already, we already uh, actually uh, uh, is completed the negotiation process related to Chapter 25 in 2016, uh, open and close in the same intergovernmental session. Actually, on that way, uh, we are trying to, to, uh, to keep uh, this uh, 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 our position, but uh, also uh, future attempts to be uh, the part of European research area. But more particularly, I will connect uh, my presentation uh, of more or less <laughs> 10 minutes to, uh, to the question of the smart specialization strategy, and then uh, related to the development of the national level to try to uh, explore and to document some opportunities, possibilities for international uh, cross-border and uh, um, uh, other uh, ways of the cooperation among the economies, among the countries. Uh, please allow me to share my presentation now. Okay, I hope uh, you see. Uh, uh, I titled this as a smart business strategy in Serbia, development, implementation, and transnational cooperation. And uh, I also thank to my uh, two young collaborators, uh, Lazar Zikovic and Diana Strbac, uh, uh, that helped me uh, to prepare this, uh, this uh, short presentation for today's uh, uh, forum session. Um, uh, just a few words about the process itself. Uh, the process of development of the uh, strategy itself in Serbia was initiated by the Minister of Education, Science and Project Development a few years ago. Actually, it took uh, more or less three years uh, development of the strategy. It was a uh, very place-based, very inclusive uh, process in, in our case, uh, starting uh, with um, this quantitative uh, part, continuing with the qualitative one, and finalized with uh, EDP. And uh, related to the EDP, we had uh, uh, really a uh, representation of um, all different uh, sectors, in particular with business one, economy one, with uh, more of the 50% uh, at each of the session inside the EDP uh, that was organized uh, 2019 uh, in, in Serbia. Uh, last year, just uh, before uh, the pandemic started, uh, in, on 27 of February, the uh, Serbian government adopted uh, the strategy itself. And uh, just recently, uh, 14 of April, the action plan of the strategy uh, has been also, was also adopted uh, by, by the government. Um, uh, I would like also to mention that uh, in the EDP process, we had uh, something like 550 people. We, we had very, very uh, deep uh, discussion and really uh, the priorities that you will see on the next slide uh, actually 
uh, were the results of that, but also uh, the specific objectives, uh, the general goal, the specific, specific objectives, uh, the, the measures and the uh, actions that are the part of nowadays action plan. Our general goal uh, was uh, uh, the development of uh, our country, Republic of Serbia, directed towards a highly competitive economy to research, development, innovation, and entrepreneurial initiatives in the areas of the smart space civilization strategy. Our shortness is uh, for S. It is actually smart space civilization strategy of the Republic of Serbia in uh, in uh, in the full. Uh, and specific objectives uh, are identified uh, along the the, the process: uh, research and development uh, focused on four S priorities: economic growth supported through. R&D innovation collaboration among the quadruple uh, helix participants, education focused on innovations and uh, uh, entrepreneurship, improved business environment through optimization, digitalization of the procedures in four S areas, and internalization of economy through involvement in regional and global value chains in the four S areas. And what are the areas we identified along the process and confirm uh, through the EDP. Four vertical ones, like uh, food for the future is, uh, with some of the priorities you see at the, at the slide, I will not repeat all of them. Then information communication technologies with custom software development, software solution development, then future machines and uh, manufacturing processes uh, with several uh, sub-priorities and also creative industries with creative audiovisual production, video games, interactive content and smart packaging. Also, uh, we identify some uh, horizontal ones, uh, cross uh, uh, priority ones, like, uh, like uh, key enabling uh, and emerging uh, technologies, uh, then uh, 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 gathering together uh, uh, based on, 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 uh, on the findings uh, for toning, advice materials, advanced manufacturing technologies, and electronics, industrial biotechnology, blockchain technologies, uh, autonomous driving our space systems and engineering plus uh, energy efficient and eco smart solutions. Uh, that is uh, that was the result, and these are actually uh, the uh, priorities on which we would like uh, to push to boost the, the, the future development development of the of the country itself, but also uh, the regional and international cross border cooperation in the in the future. Um, concerning the implementation, uh, the policy measures uh, are mainly related in our case to the streamlining research activities uh, through financing the project focus on the needs to strengthen cross-sector cooperation, then developing necessary infra infrastructure for both research and the business communities, business sectors, as well strengthening and modernization educational activities uh, in accordance with the needs of forest priority areas, then promotion of research and innovation potential and offer, offer in the four S priority areas and further development of the ecosystem necessary uh, for the full effects of research and innovation for the development of knowledge-based economy. Uh, altogether, we have uh, 43 uh, policy measures and uh, of different nature. And uh, you can see on the, on the slide and the, on the uh, left uh, uh, part of the slide, we have uh, uh, incentive ones, uh, uh, majority of them, 63% or 27 in total, then informative and educational ones, then provision of services one, and regulative uh, ones in the, in the um, smaller numbers. And uh, also, in our case, uh, it was very important to, uh, to see the, the, the kind of ownership of uh, not only the process, but the implementation of the strategy nowadays, we have involvement of the government of Republic of Serbia. We have the involvement of the Ministry of Education, Science and Technological Development, Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, Water Management, Ministry of Economy, then uh, Ministry of Culture and Information, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, uh, Innovation Fund, Science Fund, Public Policy Secretariat, who helped a lot the process itself uh, right from the beginning, and also the Center for the Promotion of Science. These institutions are responsible. These institutions are also financing some of the, of the activities inside those measures, but uh, also we have some donor organizations like uh, UNDPs, 
like USA is. And we uh, really hope in the close future we will have a very strong support of European or the different funds of the European Commission for the implementation of our, our strategy. Uh, on the next slide, uh, 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 a kind of uh, scheme for implementation and monitoring uh, uh, framework um, is presented. Uh, it should be a kind, uh, uh, updated actually according to the recent development, but it is uh, from the strategy document itself. Uh, we have EDP process uh, of uh, entrepreneurial discovery process as a basis uh, for this, and uh, it is uh, also one of the measures in, in our uh, action plan, and uh, we plan to have the continuous uh, EDP uh, uh, along the years of the implementation, and uh, we are uh, preparing and doing uh, such activities at this very moment. We started actually to implement the strategy last year, as uh, we had very well-defined um, uh, measures uh, already uh, uh, in, in uh, the strategy document, uh, and continue by this action plan implementation uh, this year. You have, you see the the, the scheme may, maybe the, the uh, one of the of the major uh, 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 and the most important unit is this organizational unit at the Ministry of Education that is uh, uh, established recently and that should actually manage uh, the activities related to uh, to the implementation of the strategy. Uh, we also have this uh, working, uh, um, small working, but important working body that is uh, reporting to the ministry and ministry to the government. On the level of the government, we, we have a particular working group that is dealing with those issues. All the time, uh, we also communicate with the Joint Research Center of European Commission, who was the, uh, the that was the institution that, that uh, uh, substantially uh, help the, the process of the development, but also uh, the implementation nowadays uh, uh, right from the beginning of that, that story. We started actually with some of the meetings with uh, Alish uh, Gnamosh, among other people, uh, uh, in 2016, 2017, uh, when we decided to enter in the process. Uh, then, uh, uh, just a few, a few uh, words about this uh, um, transnational aspect, uh, Serbia, uh, based on a uh, very well done uh, uh, process of EDP, um, became uh, one of the five countries of the global pilot program on STI for SDGs roadmaps. That means uh, that based on the methodology of the smart specialization strategy, we became uh, the part of that uh, program of the United Nations in which we cooperate uh, with JRC, very strongly with JRC, as uh, uh, JRC is uh, also uh, uh, author or, or uh, co-author of the guidance for, for that, uh, that program, and uh, also with other countries that are included. But uh, what would, I would like to emphasize here is uh, to underline that uh, we had a kind of exercise in which we actually tried to identify not, uh, how much, on which way, our, our 4S priorities contribute to 17 uh, um, goals of, uh, of SDGs, and we find out that some of them contribute directly. You see on the slide, some of them on indirect way, uh, all uh, uh, in total actually to 15 out of uh, 17 uh, pri priorities, priority, uh, priorities of the goals of the, of the sustainable development uh, uh, goals of United Nations. Uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, now, uh, in, uh, um, as a co-coordinator of uh, uh, Priority Area 7 of the uh, EU strategy for the Danube region, together with our colleagues from Slovakia, um, I would like to mention that um, uh, RISTRI is an important part of our activities there, and I would like also to open the door for our future cooperation among the uh, in between the strategies, among the strategies uh, to find uh, out the way to, to, to close the cooperation that way. As we have a particular working group on RIS-3 inside the strategy that uh, initiating development of RIS-3 in all parts of the Danube region that uh, uh, didn't have before, including Serbia, Montenegro, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Ukraine, and Moldova. Then we have very strong cooperation from that level with GRC, and uh, we are exploring the possibilities for cooperation with other macro-regional strategies. And in that sense, I would like it is it is a, a kind of invitation for our future future uh, uh, strong cooperation. 
uh, we published a very nice document last year, and uh, you can find this uh, analytical study on the, on the address that is presented uh, uh, bottom uh, at this uh, uh, slide. Uh, we continued uh, with these activities, in the, and they are um, in line with the uh, Daniel Strategy Action Plan, in particular with Action 5 and Action 6. And the goal of the working group on RIS-3 in the next period is to create a kind of a smart Danube region to develop regional value chain and support uh, the common priorities uh, in the region to have a strong role and the communication cooperation with JRC again and to, further, to go further on by using ST methodology to develop STI roadmaps for SDGs. And the first uh, positive sign in this sense is that Ukraine actually join the group of uh, at the beginning five now they six uh, piloted countries for uh, um, sti roadmaps development uh, for for the, to achieve the, the sdgs uh, it was just the, in short thank you very much and i i'm uh, open for your uh, question related all of these issues i i mentioned in my presentation thank you very much we thank you very much mr nadovic for the serbian perspective on the smart specialization strategy and uh, we go now from Serbia to Italy, or more specifically to Emilia Romagna. And I would like to invite now on the virtual stage Mrs. Uh, Caterina Branca Leoni, Head of European Policy Coordination, Planning, Cooperation and Evaluation Unit, uh, the Director General for Resources, Europe, Innovation and Institutions at the Emilia Romagna region. Mrs. Branca Leoni, you are with us. Yes, here I am. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, yes, we can hear you well and we can see okay. you well. And um, uh, Mrs. Brancaleoni, uh, the Emilia Romagna region is one of the most advanced Italian regions with regard to the implementation of the smart specialization strategy. What can you tell us uh, more about the, uh, how the region and policies um, are there to valorize its territories and potentials? We would be very keen to hear from you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lucia. Thank you for giving me the floor. Let me thank uh, all the participants of today and the panelists for this very interesting exchange of views on, on such an important uh, topic. Um, I would like just to start uh, providing you a few background information about the Emilia Romagna Regional System for Research and Innovation. This is a system that has been developing during the years. Actually, uh, our uh, regional government started to implement policies to support uh, the network uh, of research and innovation in our region starting from the first year 2000. So nowadays we have a full picture of a number of players, either public and private, uh, who um, are working and cooperating strictly in this domain of, of research and innovation with the first target of the transfer of technologies from the, let's say, public research to the private sector. In addition to that, I should also add that uh, our productive system is a little bit peculiar as it is, let's say, in the northeast of Italy, whereas instead of, of, of big industries, we have a large, very large number of small and medium-sized enterprises. So we have to target uh, uh, this specific uh, dimension of, of industries and the private sector. And, uh, and, and that's why it's important to, to provide you some background information about uh, our, our system. From this slide, you can see that the system, first of all, is rather widespread. Uh, throughout the region. Uh, by the way, our region has a population of uh, 4.5 million of inhabitants. And um, so with the is one of the most populated regions in Italy. Uh, and it's also the base of a number of, of research and innovation centers together with a, a wide network uh, of public universities. Uh, as national and international research institutes, maybe some of them are very well known also at the international level, is like the CNR, the Italian uh, Research Council, uh, together with uh, ENEA, that is the national agency uh, in charge of uh, the sustainable 
sustainable development. And then we have based in Bologna a number of institutes related to nuclear physics, astrophysics, and also the Euro Mediterranean Center for Climate Change and the National Institute for Geog Geography and Volcanology. This is important to underline also because uh, all these research centers are now uh, merging all the information, the data that they have, uh, supporting our policy on big data. So we are working, setting in Bologna uh, at the Technopole, the Big Data Foundation, because one of the, of the policies of our region is to uh, support uh, uh, the, and share between the public institu institution and the private industries also the use of big data in order to uh, increase the capacity and the innovation capacity of our companies. Uh, as I said, together with uh, a wide network of, of university, uh, we have also a regional system uh, with advanced postgraduate degrees and a number of uh, um, network also uh, representing the private sector. For instance, the PID, that is the network of the Chamber of Commerce. This to say that the uh, research and innovation policies in our regions also, let's say, before uh, the implementation of the SMA specialization strategy had at its core uh, the partnership, the public-private partnership. What uh, are the main domains uh, of the S3 in Emilia-Romagna concerning the um, planning period 2014-2020? Uh, there were three main goals. Uh, the first uh, was related to further strengthen the innovation capacity of what we consider the top regional uh, production system. And within this goal, the main sector uh, that are included is the agri-food sector. Uh, that means the, the entire filiar of production starting from production, agri-food to the processing and services supporting the processing uh, of agri-food uh, in our region. Mechatronics and motors, this is Emilia-Romagna in Italy is also known as the Motor Valley because uh, in, in our region are settled uh, companies like uh, um, Lamborghini and Ferrari, uh, which in a way are supporting all the mechatronic and, and, and motor sector together with building and construction. Then let's say in, in, in the second goal is to further strengthen uh, the, the industrial sector that have a high growth potential uh, linked to the drivers for social innovation. One of the big issues is uh, how we can uh, um, keep together innovation and what are the impact, what is the impact of innovation also in, in, uh, in the social system. So this is a social uh, challenge and we have to make sure that uh, innovation uh, can cope also with social innovation. Uh, and that's why there are two main sectors under this goal, that is health and wellness industries. And this is related of course also to our uh, health and welfare system. So how can we uh, improve innovation also in the welfare system and not only in health per se, and cultural and creative industries. And this is very important if we consider also the link of uh, uh, creative industries related to, to the culture um, heritage that we have in Italy in general, in our region as well. And, and, and what is the potential for uh, the setting up of startups in this field of young people, uh, highly skilled that can um, start new businesses in this field. And then there is that say, uh, what, what are the cross-cutting value chains uh, in, in our uh, productive system? That is energy and sustainable development, uh, which in the new uh, S3 will be at the core of all the policies and the in innovation in services. Our region is a region that has gone through uh, a big uh, transformation uh, from industry to the tertiarization of uh, the production. Uh, and therefore, innovation in services is also uh, one of the main goals of uh, uh, S3. 
what are the main results achieved in this planning period? We were at started planning uh, uh, a target of a contribution of 1.6 billion of public funds uh, deriving from funds of the regional government, but also funds mainly uh, of the cohesion policy, uh, expecting um, a leverage, uh, a multiplying effect uh, uh, for, let's say, 60% more. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, with the same public investment, we more than doubled the investments. That, that means that, in a way, uh, how we promote networks and the projects and investments, where uh, for every project there is um, the network has to be made by private industries and by public research institutions. This was positive, uh, saying that the, the capacity of involving uh, private industries in the research and um, projects was very good and high. Uh, on, on the uh, close to 10,000 uh, projects financed uh, with uh, 2,228 patents generated from these activities, uh, more than 2,000 new researchers uh, on the field, and altogether more than 60,000 people trained uh, on the main topics that I was explaining before. Uh, what, what about the new S3 strategy? Well, on the one side, uh, we have to take into account that we have uh, many new things. Uh, on, on the first side, we have uh, uh, the new um, pillar of the cohesion policy, the policy objectives, the five policy objectives that are part of the new funds for the RDF and uh, ESF. But also we have the uh, recovery and resilience plan, which in, it in Italy is very important uh, and the Italian government is putting uh, a lot of the resources uh, of the recovery fund on research for industry. So we have prepared a strategic document for the next planning period, the 21-27, uh, um, where we're trying to integrate and keep together cohesion policies and recovery fund, and what are the priorities concerning the future's mass specialization strategy. So in continuity with the, the previous uh, strategy, we are confirming, of course, the relevance uh, of the sectors that I was listing before, but we have been identifying cross-cutting areas. Cross-cutting areas that uh, are uh, in a way, um, involving all the, these main sectors that I was listing, starting from circular economy to uh, blue growth, uh, which is one of, of the area in which we believe we will have a lot of possibilities of networking with our partners in the Adrian area together with the renewable energies. Uh, but also on, as I said, uh, for us it's very important, the area of, of digitalization, artificial intelligence and big data. For our region, this will be an asset that will allow to our productive system to be highly competitive in the future. Together with this, as I said, the, the, um, what we believe also is really important, what, the, what is related to future cities and communities, cultural heritage and regional identity, uh, also because tourism was uh, um, highly hit by uh, pandemic in our region. So we need also to promote differently tourism and try to be also innovative in this sector. And as I said, social innovation uh, with the driver of the active citizenship and social inclusion. We believe that uh, um, if we, uh, if, there, there, there is uh, also from the territorial level uh, a high divergent uh, situation in, in the main cities and the inner area. This is causing an amplification of, of, of diversity of, and also the increase of poverty. So we believe the social inclusion has to be considered as a driver in the future S3 of our region. We are also 
planning of the resources to be put uh, to support, to be allocated to support uh, other strategy. So you will see that here we have uh, all the uh, funds, uh, the, the European funds together with the Italian fund for cohesion. And we also consider, even if not so, uh, no longer allocated under cohesion, uh, the, the, the European fund for rural development. As I said, the national plan for resilience, um, Italian funds uh, managed by, directly by the Italian Ministry for uh, Industry and Economy, but also all the other programs uh, that are directly man managed by the European Union, such as Horizon Europe, but also Digital Europe, and additional funds from, for instance, uh, our own budget. So uh, the, the total amount of resources that will be available uh, for uh, the next S3 uh, will be roughly 5 billion um, euros, of which uh, uh, fin public financing 2.7 billion. And we expect, uh, since we, we have the previous experience, a large participation also from the private industrial sector. So this is how we are organizing uh, our uh, smart specialization strategy. Of course, we are available for any kind of question for the audience. Uh, I think you also have our email address, so we can also receive later questions or requests for additional information. Thank you very much for your attention. We thank you very much, Mrs. Brancaleoni, for your presentation and insight into the uh, smart specialization strategy of the region Emilia-Romagna. We are staying in the region, however, we are switching a bit the perspective from a, from a pure regional one to a broader one, to that of a, a program that uh, is the Adrian program hosted uh, and also uh, managed in the region of Emilia-Romagna. And I would like to invite now Mr. Lodovico Gerardi, uh, coordinator of the Managing Authority Union uh, Unity, Unit at the Emilia-Romagna region. Uh, please uh, come yes. on the virtual stage and okay. while you are preparing for your presentation I would like to ask you the question within your area of intervention in the Adrian Managing Authority what has the program done in the current programming period uh, to promote the smart specialization strategies and what is the state of play of post 2020 programming the floor is all yours for the next okay day. okay thank, thank you, you. Thank you a lot, and uh, now I hope to show you in the right way. Okay, super, I did. Uh, no, I from from the beginning I want to say that okay, we are in the same region with Caterina, but uh, we are also in the same department because uh, the view and the strategy of uh, uh, our regional administration is from one side to uh, force and to push and to push our territory inside of the region, but uh, the other uh, face of the medal is also to uh, be uh, more proactive as we can inside of the area that for our administration is really strategic as is uh, the area of Adriatic Ionian uh, region. And this is the reason why we uh, accepted in, we, uh, we candidated in this programming in period 2014-2020, and we are confirmed in 2021-2027 as managing authority of this program. Uh, for the first uh, thing, I wanted to say that uh, we are the managing authority of a transnational program. And uh, Adrian, as transnational program, ATC transnational program, acts as a policy driver and governance innovator fostering European integration. The thing that uh, the meaning of this phrase is that a transnational program as have to coordinate, to increase, and uh, to um, be a policy driver. Uh, and uh, the main thing that uh, Adrian uh, can do and expectation is that the transnational European program Adrian have to promote and increase the degree of collaboration and favor the knowledge sharing and the learning process in the area. 
the thing that I say is that we try to link the experience that uh, our colleague uh, said before and explained before and try to have a common project and try to promote this network of experience. And uh, this is the really importance of uh, a transnational program to uh, increase the networks, to increase the sharing of the experience. In the field of uh, innovation, uh, in this programming period, we uh, founded uh, 17 uh, projects, and in this 17 project works uh, 145 beneficiary in the uh, in the academia and in the research sectors this means that and this is a big difference between uh, um, our program and the past because the involvement of academia and the research sector uh, was increased a lot in this period and the link between public and private, but the academia and research sector and industries, it was really increased as following the same strategy and the same policy that my region <clears throat> used, as I said, Katerina, before, also to uh, develop the uh, uh, um, the, 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 um, the administration and the, uh, and the sector of innovation in our region. Uh, what are the, uh, the sector in this program? Okay, uh, shipbuilding, traditional sector, biotechnology, emergence, uh, emerging uh, sectors, environment and energy technologies, tourism, nature and cultural heritage, e-governance and e-tools for management. And for all this, uh, and uh, all this uh, issue was uh, covered in this uh, 17 project, the program uh, used 23.6 million uh, of uh, the total budget of the program, but the total budget of the program is 100 million. This means that more or less the 20% of the total amount of the program was devoted to this, uh, to, to the innovation in this field. Okay, uh, Eusire and Adrian. Adrian exists because exists uh, Eusire. We are the program, uh, the European um, uh, transnational uh, uh, program, complete that have the same area of the uh, strategy. And for this reason, and for the characteristic of the program that I explained before, uh, we are the uh, point of connection between the general strategy from the strategy, uh, from the uh, macro regional strategy, and the uh, main stakeholders. Main achievement. Uh, from from our side, transnational models developed uh, for testing, upscaling, comparison, and evaluation of innovation. Pilot solution developed uh, to improve innovation and allow technology transfer in uh, SMEs. Platform developed supporting networking and cooperation among enterprises, business support organization, and research institutes. A transnational pilot cluster supporting sustainable shipbuilding in Adriatic Union region, Strate strategies and action plans supporting innovation and development in their specific domain of intervention. These are the main achievements completely related to the pillars of uh, the strategy. And we, uh, in, in the smart specialization, three macro regional smart specialization strategy uh, in the field of uh, um, agrobioeconomy, energy and environment, transport and mobility. And we, uh, um, we expect a result from the first regional S3 uh, 
on blue growth that we selected in the third call, uh, third call that we launch in, uh, in uh, 2019 and uh, as a strategic project. We start our activities as program as uh, open call, with open call. And we arrive uh, in the third call that was a strongly targeted call. And we uh, draft the uh, more or less the term of reference to S3 on blue economy. This means that we force to have this strategic project. There was not a, a bottom-up approach, but we use for this a top-down approach because we strongly believe in the importance. And as said also Katerina before, we strongly believe in a blue growth uh, uh, sector as a, a possibility of innovation and the possibility to develop a S3 strategy. Okay, for the future. For the future, we want to uh, continue in this, uh, in, in our job in this direction. And uh, we uh, wanted to develop uh, transnational and macro regional clusters. We wanted to increase this system. We wanted to support the development and the implementation of the S3 at the transnational and macro regional level. And following the thing that I said before, because we are a program that uh, try to increase the, uh, the, 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 um, the networking, try to, um, try to share the experience between stakeholders and so on, support the mobili mobilization of the stakeholder in the field of research and innovation based on a quadruple helix approach and enhancing the, the level of cooperation between research center, higher education, public administration, and businesses. And this, this is, I believe, a crucial point because uh, when the, uh, world, uh, the, the, the world of research uh, meet the, the world of the enterprises, this means that there will be a very strong development in the activity. And especially in this part of Europe, in where we have a lot of possibility and a lot of differences between part and part of this region. And as, uh, as we underlined, we are a very rich and a very, a very developed regions, region. But I believe that we can use our experience, experience to uh, help and to, uh, and to work with all of the part of this, uh, of this area, because we believe that the development of the entire area is and will be crucial for the development of all the Europe, because this is a crucial point. And for sure, promote the development of digital solution and uh, SMEs development and modernization. Okay, uh, more or less, I believe that this is uh, uh, this was our uh, our um, our point of view when we start in this uh, process, and the importance to be uh, managing authority is exactly in this uh, in this line to link our experience inside of our region with the experiences that we can do and we can help to do inside of all the area. For sure, I am here with uh, Katerina to answer if there will be a question or uh, everything. Thank you a lot. Thank you very much. And first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, the managing authority, the whole team for the achievements uh, made in the, in the past period. And 
also a, a personal uh, statement uh, with my 20 years of experience in clustering. I am a strong believer like you are in the power of collaboration, mm -hmm. uh, building networks, but going beyond just pure networking. That's where the key and the sparkle for uh, uh, collaborative innovation uh, really is. Oh, just a personal <laughs> yeah. uh, statement. Congratulations again. And it is not uh, that uh, the next speaker and the last uh, presenting uh, at this event has uh, something to continue from what you just said. So um, the focus at this point is placed on two Adrian funded projects that are uh, considered outstanding examples of the efforts made by the program uh, and the project partners to support smart visualization strategies. On one hand, we have the OIS Air project, almost concluded, uh, that has designed the first pilot macro regional smart specialization strategy for the uh, Adriatic Ionian region. And on the other hand, the Blue Air project has just kicked off, as uh, Mr. Gerardi uh, just informed us, and aims at uh, defining a common transnational smart specialization strategy on blue growth for the uh, Adrian region. And in order to learn more uh, about the uh, about these projects, uh, we invited uh, Mr. Doma Goisharic, uh, representing the Chamber of Commerce of Economy of Croatia in the sector for industrial development and innovation system, um, who is partner in both projects. So we are going to learn directly from the source, if I may say so. So, uh, Mr. Sharic, uh, please come on the virtual stage and share the screen for your presentation. Uh, thank you very much, Lucia. Thank while, you all. While uh, you are doing this, I would maybe just like to uh, set the scene for, for, for your presentation. Mm -hmm. um, the institution uh, you represent, as I said, is involved in both projects um, aimed at supporting the development uh, of a regional innovation ecosystem for the whole Adriatic Union area. So what can you tell us about the methodological approach used for OIS Air and Blue Air projects? And in addition to that, what extent have the results of the OIS Air project uh, been taken into consideration at national and regional level? So to open, let's say, the floor for, for you to take over. Thank you very much. I hope you see my screen, uh, my yes. presentation. Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. So I, as in, introduced, I will, I will uh, tell you a story about two projects uh, and the challenges in a very uh, diversified macro region, so with the great diversity and where we try to use the tools uh, and the approaches and the methodo methodologies from the smart specialization strategy for uh, uh, find the common uh, trajectories and uh, common, let's say, point of interest where, where we uh, can introduce uh, the innovation and boost the capacities of the region. So, uh, this project, uh, uh, OSR, which stands for Open Innovation System of Adriatic Union Region, has uh, three main pillars. So it's uh, one of the first pilot macro-regional smart specialization strategy uh, we developed in that time. We begin with uh, three years ago or two and a half years ago, beginning with the 2018th. Uh, also, uh, we helped to, to, to boost, or not to boost, but to help the, the, the innovation capacities uh, in the regions uh, by technology transfer between the public uh, you know, innovation research institutions and the business innovation support through the helping uh, companies uh, with the innovation audits and uh, other tools to, to be aware more of cooperation and co collaboration. And the third uh, pillar will be about uh, uh, setting up a hub and spoke network for as a platform for collaboration. So uh, in short, so we have, a f we develop a focus uh, and find the focus uh, to help uh, the innovation uh, over the network uh, within the collaboration. The, the two main, uh, let's say, uh, tangible uh, outputs was a proof of concept call, so uh, call for, for uh, 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 collaboration between the public research organization and SMEs uh, to cope with the uh, value of that area between technology readiness level from four, five to six, seven, uh, and uh, we, uh, in that call, we uh, prize uh, for 10 innovation vouchers and also do a business innovation audit with uh, almost 115 uh, 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 companies. 
So if I may uh, take a, a snapshot of the diversity of our macro uh, region. So, uh, uh, and the, the, the connection point through the value chains and at that time, so the global value chains and at that time, it was a very uh, a popular uh, tool for, for uh, having uh, uh, a glue for, for, for uh, many stakeholders or players in various positions of the value chains. So we on the left side, see uh, the participation of the global value chains from the member uh, uh, countries of the, of the macro, Adrian macro region. So we see that the most developed ones as Italy and Slovenia is, uh, have the greatest uh, participation in the global value chains. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the traditional trade flow in Adrian region has a different picture so that the less developed countries are trading more within the region. So we find that this uh, uh, advancement in uh, uh, in, uh, uh, let's say, elite trade, which global value chains are. So the advanced buyers, uh, very, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, niche uh, things uh, are very advanced in the development and the global trade from the other side. And some of resources and sourcing of, of those value chains can be also found in, in, in the region. And the value chains, as, as you see, uh, uh, have uh, several stages. So we saw that this kind of approach uh, with the smart specialization strategy tools can be very appropriate for the challenge of having the uh, 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 macro regional smart specialization strategy, which was in that time a little bit uh, a mysterious thing. Yeah, so uh, according to the methodology, so we, we use uh, uh, more or less within the within the budget and the time frame and the, and the scope of the project, uh, 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 data, available data and desk research, and also the, the, the information gained from the, from the partners within the project. And we collect uh, from the G uh, GRS tool, uh, IRIS uh, tool, which uh, Alish, uh, Mr. Alish Namush mentioned already, we collect uh, almost 33 smart specialization strategies, regional ones and the national ones, depending uh, where they came from, plus several documents which are uh, in that time something similar to S3 from the IPA countries, which are in the process in that time, in the process, in the beginning or the middle, uh, in the middle or uh, in the end, uh, which was uh, a case with the Montenegro. So we uh, we analyzing more than 200 thematic priority areas, and uh, then we try to classify it into 20 uh, broader uh, thematic areas and correlating uh, correlating with the uh, EOSIR because EOSIR is a one of the hosts of our project. So we have to uh, uh, pay attention what the EOSIR is uh, uh, is uh, pushing as a, as a, as a thematic and topics. So to correlate uh, with, with this, then we identify the five uh, most frequent and the most, uh, 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 let's say, explored thematic uh, priority areas within the region, and then exploring the, the, the NACE codes uh, of the businesses, scientific domains, policy objectives, keywords, uh, R&D excellence, what we also explore, plus some, uh, 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 let's say, European uh, 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 documents according to the strategy and the foresight to see uh, uh, what subtopics to choose and uh, with what trajectories to connect and transform the traditional, try to transform the traditional uh, industries because the one of the main point of the smart specialization is to transform uh, and make a transition uh, for, uh, for uh, traditional industries and uh, find the new ones uh, to maintain the competitiveness and uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, more growing in jobs and innovation to push the economy forward. So, and uh, at last uh, we make a strategy fit uh, choosing the five uh, areas. Also uh, in that time we, we saw that uh, the, uh, to understand the challenge is also a, a very big issue, not the issue, but also the point we have, uh, should care about because uh, uh, diversity of the region and the various stages of the development of the smart specialization strategy. Even in Croatia, we, we are the, the, the youngest member state. We first, uh, our, our first uh, obsession is to fulfill the ex-ante uh, condition for having the, the funds from the 
from the uh, from the European Union, and then uh, uh, we try to to figure it out later how to cope with all these things uh, and the mission and the clearness of uh, where we are going with this should be also emphasis and and bring bring to to, to the surface. So we use uh, uh, the mission. Uh, based uh, innovation uh, from Mariana Mazzucato in that time, it was a very uh, 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 disruptive way of, of looking how to, how to push and how to move uh, a bigger clusters or bigger scope of, of, of uh, stakeholders uh, into, into, into some clear goals. So we use uh, uh, this approach, uh, so we set a, a purpose and a vision uh, for the macro regional strategy as, as, a, as a unique for all five uh, thematic priority areas. And for each thematic priority areas, we set up mission and goals and use the, the key enabling technologies and whatever is needed to, to, to push the subtopics as a solution based uh, 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 topics. Uh, the result of macro regional uh, uh, smart specialization strategy is a, is a five areas, so uh, most of them are almost similar to, to, to the presentation which, uh, and the analysis which made by GRC and showed by uh, Mr. Gnamush. And this is the agrobioeconomy, energy and environment, transport and mobility, plus tourism and culture and health and medicine. So, and in this schematic uh, 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 picture, you can see that the purpose and vision is the same. So each has a mission goals and uh, 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 subtopics. This is the, 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 the example of the agrobioeconomy. So the, the, the main mission is a, like a healthy and functional food, uh, the fresh and safe Mediterranean diet delivered from its source. So because the Adrian region is, a, let's say, a one of the heart of the Mediterranean. So many countries uh, have uh, such a type of diet and no, known for such a type of diet. So it's easy to to comprehend the, the, the challenge. So the, the goal is the creating and securing sustainable value chain based on regional fresh seafood marketed for healthier lifestyle. So we choose a couple of subtopics. We uh, 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 consulting the, the, the documents, uh, foresight documents, strategic documents. In that time, the, uh, the, the, the key strategic value chains are emerging as, as a, as a uh, overall EU policy toward geopolitical situation and the competitiveness as a whole. So we, here you can see the, the outcomes of each subtopics, sub which we think uh, as a partnership within the, within the project that can drive the innovation and bring all stakeholders on, on, on the platform of this. Here we have a, 10 awarded projects, uh, say six of them from agro-bioeconomy bio and several of them are even cross-regional uh, cooperation between, uh, let's say, Italian and Serbian uh, uh, R&D and SMEs to, to bring the the, the 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 proof of concept to, to life so we see we see uh, uh, this uh, on, on 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 the scene and and uh, practical uh, collaboration success on the let's say small smaller scale because we are a, a small project uh, not, not to forget that we were aware that we cannot do the full smart specialization strategy procedure and, and the recipe for bringing one to a life so we, we, we choose the, uh, we fulfill, so, so to speak, the place-based place -based approach. So we made the benchmark uh, analysis. Uh, we explored the value chains and trade analysis. Also, we use uh, regional smart specialization strategies as a bottom-up approach because they are already identified identifying this, the, the capacities of each region in each country. Uh, the EDP is uh, made uh, from, from, the, from the regional point of view. So we use them as a bottom up. Uh, also uh, consulting, as I, as I mentioned, consulting several, several uh, strategy documents, we uh, bring broad view of innovation and social and technological aspects. Inclusive, so the EDP process is not done on also monitoring and evaluation, which we have uh, put in, 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 in the action plan for further developing the macro-regional smart specialization strategy if we will have a chance. Okay, but maybe we will. So we, we apply for another uh, 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 in the third call as, as uh, already in, uh, was introduced for another project and uh, we get a chance uh, to continue 
with uh, with the methodological approach. So here we will try uh, uh, to uh, build uh, more capacities for a governance uh, uh, to set up the scenes for the smart specialization strategy, because especially to to help with the advanced one, to help the less advanced one and less developed one because the, the S3 is a very complex, as uh, uh, my predecessor said. Also, we will focus more on blue growth as, a, as a one of the main pillars of the LSI strategy and the, uh, and, and the regional, macro-regional point of interest. Also, we will introduce the EDP tool special design for uh, develop for the blue growth uh, space and areas. Uh, and we will have uh, eight pilots uh, uh, along the reg uh, eight regions. And also we will establish a, a blue, uh, blue air innovation community to uh, continuation with the OSR network. So uh, to read this uh, uh, final thought, continuing the macro regional approach to foster the innovation ecosystem by using help from S3 capacities and MAPIC value chains to find the common ones that would glue stakeholders from the Adriatic Ionian region on mission for transforming traditional blue sectors and uh, perhaps build a new ones. So this will be all for me. Thank you very much. So, and also to answer for, for your question, what was, a, let's say, a, a challenge for us is uh, the, the diversity of the region was, uh, let's say, uh, 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 more challenging than analyzing the, the, the data itself because uh, at that time the different levels of uh, development of smart specialization strategy and uh, understanding what the strategy is really uh, what the strategies are really are uh, is a little bit uh, 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 distracting for us but we use a very good uh, usage of, of uh, GRC tools uh, which uh, we use the most. Uh, also, we, we did some adoption and data preparation to, 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 to successfully uh, set up the methodology. But also, uh, uh, I would, uh, let's say, mention that uh, the update, regular updating and more detailing uh, uh, the, the, the data uh, in this uh, GRS tools uh, will be very helpful to enhance the cross-regional uh, and macro-regional collaboration on the smart specialization strategies. This is definitely the truth. So thank you very much. And we Alex. thank you very, very much. And congratulations uh, for, for the two projects, for the almost concluded one for OIS Air, and also wishing you all the best in implementing and developing the, the Blue Air uh, project with all the knowledge that has been uh, captured and gathered uh, in, the, in the previous time. Thank you very and much. also, thank you for sharing uh, the challenges. I think uh, that's and also for putting in the challenges as well, um, uh, as well. Uh, not only the data, but uh, also uh, or bringing or bridging a bit uh, to the topic uh, of the transnational collaboration. That's not a, that was not necessarily to be seen as a challenge, but more like a uh, let's say uh, a catalyst for developing. Um, the process, and I think this is maybe the right uh, the right moment to open up the dialogue with the with the speakers, and um, in this sense, maybe a question addressed to all of you. Please uh, come on the on the virtual uh, stage uh, all together, and the question is, you know, uh, actually looking or putting the the spotlight on uh, the transnational collaboration, which is at the heart of the of the process of building uh, and implementing st uh, smart, special, uh, smart specialization strategies. And uh, the Adrian program, as we learned, is supporting uh, the, the uh, smart specialization strategies in uh, the next programming period. So how do you see the role of the transnational collaboration uh, in, in this process? I would like to open the, the floor to whoever of you would like to answer, please raise your hand or unmute, I see a hand raised there. It's Mr. Nedovic, and then followed by Mr. Kopakis. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Um, yes, uh, I think it's very important, really important to, to have uh, this component, uh, particularly in this region of the Western Balkans, I, I think. Um, 
and what uh, we discussed uh, at the previous sessions uh, uh, together uh, with the partner uh, economies here in the region together with JRC even we had one session a uh, year and a half uh, ago uh, here in Berge together with Montenegro when um, uh, some of the priorities already uh, were selected uh, by, by both uh, uh, economies uh, to build up uh, on uh, the common ones on the on the on the uh, priorities uh, that uh, both economy have in, in their smart specialization strategies uh, but also with some other activities and actions uh, what i know is that jrc at the moment uh, mm, is preparing the thematic workshops in different areas uh, of uh, the common areas for uh, of different countries, uh, uh, like uh, priority ones in the smart specialization strategies of different countries, uh, that uh, will be organized before the summer or maybe after the summer. Uh, it will be a great opportunity to discuss and uh, to develop a kind of um, regional value chain uh, on which we could build up uh, uh, more uh, uh, energy to put more energy and to to actually. Uh, uh, invest more in the future development of our economies. Um, uh, it is, it is uh, in this stage, uh, particularly in the region, I think one, one of the uh, most important, uh, 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 one of the most important topic uh, to identify. And uh, I'm, I'm happy that uh, to, to, to follow this uh, presentation of um, Alex Namush that, that is already identified uh, in the, in the, Adriatic Union uh, regions, uh, uh, what is uh, in common for, for all different regions, uh, we, would, uh, we would probably do similar in the Western Balkans soon uh, and uh, continue to, to work together and invest together in, in the common areas. Don't remember that uh, uh, some, some uh, decades ago, it was uh, one economy area, I mean, um, uh, one of the, we, we have several countries here, but uh, we had also the one big one and uh, uh, we could build up uh, 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 the, the system, uh, the, the, um, the, the, the economy that is based on the knowledge that is based on innovation and that uh, could be built on these uh, common issues in uh, all different strategies we develop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think next, uh, or the first hand after you was that of the Dimitri Korpakis. And then I was informed that Mrs. Haji, you had raised your hand, and Mrs. Katerina Brancaleone. Come. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Lucia. Uh, I will be very brief. Uh, I think the, the important uh, point to, to stress when we talk about uh, macro-regional smart specialization strategy is to stress the, uh, the, the concept of smart complementarity. So all we have seen that uh, in, in most regions, uh, people have identified extremely well uh, their strengths, uh, maybe sometimes too much, uh, because it, it somehow confirmed uh, my initial uh, remark about somehow th there is a stress that no, nothing should be left out. So everything could be uh, inclus in included in the strategy, which is actually one of the stages. So you have to understand your strengths and you have to know where you want to go. But then the next stage uh, is something that uh, I have seen in the presentation by Emilia Romania, where uh, you have identified uh, everything, but at the same time, at one point, there were two or three priorities that were really standing out as competitive advantage in the future. So this exercise, I think, is worth uh, uh, undertaking at the level of the macro region. And uh, why? Because we need to have uh, most uh, joint investments for creating this, uh, I would say, new space of competitiveness and collaboration in the context of the recovery plans. We have a major opportunity with the recovery and resilience plans ahead of us. And I think this is the moment that people have to seize this opportunity to identify their joint competitiveness uh, advantage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kopakis. I would like to give the floor now to Mrs. Haji uh, for you to, to speak and answer the question from your perspective. 
Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, I, I would say that the transnational contribution is uh, really important. And uh, I believe that the focus now should be uh, the regional and the transnational perspective when we are drafting and some countries, as we know, are already implementing these three strategies. So uh, the Western Balkans and the Adriatic Union region area should be considered now as one region and when it comes to the economic development. So in this context, we should try to identify uh, those uh, uh, regional uh, priority sectors that we focus uh, so that we specialize in uh, in different aspects where we are good at. So this would permit us to coordinate efforts in certain sectors uh, that are priority for the region and focus on the national strengths uh, and creating these regional value chains. We already have started with, with that, uh, uh, especially in view in the context of the Common Regional Market Action Plan. Uh, the pillar of uh, industry there, we are piloting one regional, let's say, value chain. And we'll see how that goes, but this is the future. I mean, we should work together and we should work as one, as one region. So, and we should not forget that uh, the COVID crisis has redefined our habits uh, and the whole, whole industries has, have been redefined and also has brought some innovative business models that we should uh, uh, see or, and how to uh, make the best use of them. The post-COVID reality will uh, require uh, new thinking from all of us and we should uh, focus our attention on sharing knowledge between us and sharing information uh, because in that way we can have greater impact for our economies, for each of our economies but also as for the region as a whole. So the focus should be more on collaborative efforts, on, uh, on joint projects, uh, on, uh, on joint uh, uh, ways of working together, cooperation of researchers, of businesses, of private sector, and aiming at delivering innovative results and contributing to the development of each of our countries and of the region. Uh, and S3 strategies and smart specialization is really a tool that could help us achieve this. So this is my thought on the... Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your contribution. We go now uh, as, uh, in the order that I have seen the hands raised, Mrs. Branca Leoni, followed by Mr. Gerardi and Mr. Knamush afterwards. Yes, Lucia, thank you very much. Just a few words uh, saying that uh, we are tackling this issue uh, in the task force for the preparation of the next cooperation program of Adrian. So we have also to consider that Adrian uh, will have uh, a budget which is for sure limited in, in relation to the expectation that all the countries have. Sorry, that's ringing. I'm very sorry. Uh, so the, the expectations are much higher than the, the budget we will have to, to, to support this kind of policy. Therefore, we believe that uh, um, being at a national level and other than being at a national program, it should be a kind of a platform where we can have this kind of, of exchange of views and identifying common, uh, common points in developing uh, the, the strategies. What we can do more, and this is an effort that we can do not only as Emilia-Romagna regions, but let's say, but that, that who has already experienced uh, the developing of, of this kind of strategies is how to be concrete and identify also uh, the financial tools that can uh, help be concrete and in the capacity of implementing then the strategy. And I agree with what said uh, before uh, Mr. Korpakis, uh, the, the strategy that doesn't have to be a shopping list, of course. Uh, therefore, uh, again, I believe that uh, one of the value added of, of the future Adirum program would be to focus on, on, on few uh, common uh, um, priorities that can be then developed uh, by the countries that are participating to the program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Gerardi, your opinion on okay. the importance of the transnational no, yeah, Yes, no, no, to, 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 give, uh, to give to you uh, some information. The discussion inside of the task force of uh, the uh, mm, uh, Political, um, political objective and uh, specific objective is uh, in, in development. But now we arrive to uh, 
to, to agree in, uh, to put inside of the program in the framework of the fact that we have not yet the certainness of the total amount uh, of the budget of our program, first. Second, more or less will be the same budget of uh, this programming period. And uh, as said uh, Caterina before, there are not a lot of money, but uh, with a very, very, very high expectation. But inside of this, in the task force, uh, there we, there will be for sure a more competitive and smarter Europe by promoting promoting innovative and smart economic economic transformation political objective one there will be a specific objective developing a skill for smart specialization industrial transition and entrepreneurship and this will be and this will and it was agreed inside of the task force and uh, now is in discussion uh, some indicative action related to this. We, uh, we, we uh, propose to the task force promote the development of smart specialization strategies at the transnational and micro-regional level. Pay attention in transnational and micro-regional level because this is a crucial point for us. Uh, in the main area of specialization, not all, but in the main area, as agri-food, as uh, safe nutrition, energy, sustainable tourism, quality of life, health, and so on. But for sure, uh, these, these are indicative actions that we propose, but the money are not enough to go deeply in all of this. And it is important to have a clear strategy of the strategy. Sorry yes. for this. Of course. And, and, and have a clear idea of the level and of the dimension of the strategy. Because for us, it is important that all the country, at least, or the majority of the country has to be involved. I closed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I would like to, to give, let's say, the final word to conclude uh, the, this event to Mr. Uh, Alex Knamus from the Joint Research Center of the European Commission for your yeah. uh, Thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, a few lines, a few thoughts uh, while I was listening and, and also related to your, your direct questions. So I think uh, overall, uh, EU SAR, so uh, Adriatic Ionian European Macro Region actually gives a very solid framework to align uh, the smart possession priorities among the partners, the, the involved countries and regions, and uh, they should actually work towards, uh, towards selecting the regional uh, value chains where they are strong. So, of course, our study indicated some, but probably there should be more, more in-depth study made. Um, and, and they should, in particular, adjust towards the, the main European uh, objectives now. So digitalization, the European Green Deal, sustainability. So um, actually our analysis showed that there, is some, there are some strengths in, even in the Western Balkans, but also overall uh, EU star uh, territory uh, on these on this, uh, fields. Uh, but very important is to actually, through alignment of that and through systematic cooperation, reach maturity of these innovation cooperation activities. Because... Um, uh, our friend Dimitri Korpakis mentioned the i instrument. Okay, it is a very important instrument. Uh, it will become a very important instrument. There's a lot of money there. Uh, but while this is open to all, the successful bidders will be those that will be able to demonstrate the maturity of their uh, value chain cooperation on a specific competitive fields. So, you know, uh, those regions that are uh, involved in, in kind of trans-regional, inter-regional inter cooperation for a long time, they are much more prepared, much better prepared than those that just start. They just started. So, uh, moreover, uh, these the successful bidders will most probably address the sustainable components related to the digital sustainable economic transformation of Europe. So it's important to have in mind, but of course there is no uh, there is no need to despair, uh, even for the less developed uh, regions or for those that are still kind of in the pathway of developing their smart specialization. Uh, there will be different stages of support. So even in the future, there will be still possibility to to establish some kind of partnerships at, on on specific topics, which will later through cooperation grow. To the stages where they could compete for the i3 instrument so definitely i mean you know the th 
things go well, even within the, some projects that are supported with Adrian, uh, like this OSR, Blue Air, and so on. Uh, I mean, it, it, is, it is perfectly fine to, to actually, you need to start somewhere. And, uh, and, and actually add up the, the additional regions and, and countries from the macro region that are not part of it and see where there will be their role and try to find the, uh, the way to the, to the value chains where, where, where these, actually, these territories could be competitive in the European and global scale. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I think with this, we can go towards uh, closing uh, this event that has been very rich in uh, information, in good practices, in also speaking very openly about the challenges encountered. And I think I speak for all the participants and the speakers that everybody's looking forward to the next programming period and how to make things uh, you know, go in the best possible way uh, in, in, in this year. So. I would like to take this uh, opportunity now at the end to thank you very much to all the speakers for your very generous contributions with knowledge. Uh, to thank also the audience for following uh, us until the end. We started with a bit of, of a delay, so, but, so therefore we are in time now. And uh, also wishing uh, to everybody involved in this very uh, complex process of building a smart specialization strategy at the transnational level in the Adrian program, a lot of success. And thank you very much to everybody, also to the technical team in the back uh, for, for all the support for this uh, successful event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good luck. Bye -bye. Good luck.